Lennon is sponsored in loving memory of David Gerlitz in remembrance of his birthday, December 28th. We are going to know that on Tuesday is Christmas Eve, right? Yes. Okay. If you didn't know that, on Tuesday is Christmas Eve. I am trying to be helpful. We are having one Christmas Eve service. It's going to be at 8 p.m. and it's going to be where? Right. Okay. So please make sure that you know that. One Christmas Eve service, what time? Where? Thank you. You know, somebody's going to come up to me and ask me this week. Probably nobody here this morning. What time is Christmas Eve and where is it? It happens every year. I am going to be having a uh, short vacation. I'm going to be on vacation from Christmas Day. I'll be back in the office on January 30th. Um, you'll be happy to know that Ken is going to be
all nations, all of the world, will prove God's presence in and through this peaceful world.
Peace with joy says to us, it doesn't have to be this way. We can shift from joining chaos and to being in the quiet eye of the storm where Emmanuel, God with us, has set up residence. And we can be Emmanuel for each other when the storm is threat to overtake the people, community, and creation around us. So once more people, let's practice peaceful joy. Today we light the candle of peace.
We have only to dip into it, for we have the joy, joy, joy down in our heart. <laughs>
to walk. Both of them are too tired to talk. The road is long and they cannot stop. The fuzzy brown donkey perked up his ear with just a cry, at last we are here. But oh, what a crowd so many lives. And where would they stay at the end of the day? Mary shows up on the light that the day of the innkeeper say. If you don't mind some cows and sheep, I have a place where you can sleep. Do you have a room? Poor Joseph said, we've come so far and we need a bed. But the busy computer just shook his head. The fuzzy brown doggy was glad to stay beside a manger filled with hay. <laughs>
ready for Christmas, she said with a sigh as she gave the last touch to the gifts piled high. Then she literally sat a moment and read till soon, very soon, she was nodding her head. Ready for Christmas? What do you mean? You wouldn't acknowledge your friend on the street. Ready for Christmas while holding a grudge? Perhaps you'd better let God be the judge. She woke with a start and a cry of despair. There's so little time, and I still to prepare. Oh, Father, forgive me. I see what you mean. To be ready means more than a house that clean. Yes, more than the giving of gifts and a tree. It's the heart swept clean that he wanted to see. A heart that is free from bitterness and sin. So be ready for Christmas and be ready for him.
watching. He knows best.
decided to cross something off my bucket list. Now you all know I'm a rabid endorsement. And I decided to try something out of my comfort zone. I decided to go horseback riding. I was really afraid for the horse, but the horse was strong. The horse was beautiful, and the rate to ride the horse was inexpensive. I paid my fee and got on the horse. It began to move gently and slowly. And then it got faster and faster. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get the horse to slow down. It got wilder and wilder, and I could barely hold on. I lost the grip with my one hand, and then I was leaning over to the side, holding on desperately. It was bucking and bucking and trying to throw me off. I was dangling over the side, screaming for help. People looked at me. I was hoping someone would help me, but they just stopped and laughed. I was terrified with sweat dripping down my face. And then, thankfully, the cashier at Meyer came and unbuckled the horse. <laughs> Finally, peace, peaceful joy. Okay, that was silly and having a little bit of fun. But we've all had times in our lives, many times, when peace was not something we were feeling, let alone peaceful joy. Sometimes a peace which passes all understanding, a sense of peaceful joy, is elusive. In today's scripture reading from the message, we read Matthew's version of the birth of Jesus. Matthew is telling the story through the eyes of Joseph, who at first is not very much at peace with what was transpiring. Matthew tells us that Joseph and Mary were not yet married, and tells us that Mary and Joseph had not consummated their relationship and that Mary was a virgin. And Joseph is distressed and decides to gently end the relationship and move on without shame and Mary. When the angel of the Lord, Matthew tells us, speaks to Joseph in a dream, and there follows an amazing statement. He did exactly what God's angel commanded him in the dream. He married Mary. He did exactly what God's angel had commanded. He did exactly what, call, what God called him to do. He did exactly what God called him to be. These words to me are compelling because Joseph found peaceful joy in doing what God had commanded him. And the reason Joseph was able to find this peaceful joy, well, there were two reasons. First, that Joseph was a person who was connected to God. He had connected himself to God. He went to temple on a regular basis, he prayed on a regular basis. Joseph had built a relationship with God that enabled him, that enabled him even when he was questioning things, to have faith. Joseph had made God a priority in his life. And secondly, because Joseph had a relationship with God, Joseph had the ability to be still and listen to God. So when Joseph heard God speaking to him through an angel through the dream, Joseph knew that this was a message from God. Joseph had actually learned to listen to God. Now, life at the time of Joseph and Mary was chaotic and difficult and filled with uncertainty, not unlike our time today, when life is difficult and chaotic and filled with uncertainty. But the narrative in Matthew reminds us that in the middle of chaos, confusion, and tension, the birth of Jesus took place. And every Christmas, we are reminded of that. 
God gives us the ability to embrace and live lives of peaceful joy. And Joseph teaches us how. First, by making sure to have a relationship with God, making God a priority in our lives. And secondly, taking the time to be still and listening to the voice of God. Because of these two things, Joseph had the ability <coughs> to listen to God and do what God asked him to do. And these are the keys of finding peaceful joy, connecting to God, being, listening to God, and being obedient to God. In chaotic times, they are an invitation to peaceful joy. It's up to us to accept the invitation. Amen. As we pray today, there have been several people we've been asked to pray for. Um, one of the people who has taught voice to many people in the region is Debbie King Rocky, and she was recently diagnosed with cancer, and she's undergoing cancer treatment, so we've been asked to pray for her. Um, Skip Elmer's son, Karen Elmer's brother, is in the hospital in Savannah, Georgia, after suffering, suffering a major heart attack. Um, so we ask you to keep Brent in your prayers for if God's giving him to be a opponent. Alice Krosky has been in the hospital all week. Um, and she was just moved to Autumn Woods last night, so we have to pray for Alice. And her great granddaughter, Cameron Schneider, is also in the hospital. Um, Cameron is ill, and we ask you to pray for her as well. Additionally, we ask you to pray for the family of Mary Elizabeth Perber of Memphis, Indiana. Um, and she is survived by her children, son Chuck um, Kerber and um, Sandy Kerber. And lastly, um, Joe Earls' sister-in-law passed away, uh, Rebecca and Becky Earls. Um, and the visitation for her is at Newcomer Funeral Home today um, from 12 to 6. And the funeral is um, tomorrow. <coughs> Joe's family in your prayers as well. Uh, let us pray. Most Holy God, as we come together this day, we are reminded of the fact that you came into the world on Christmas. You came into the world of expectation and waiting. Our waiting is almost over. And we ask that as this waiting comes to an end, we might be able to come together in peace and love and joy and hope and endurance to celebrate your birth on Christmas Eve. No matter what the difficulties of our lives, no matter what the difficulties of our world may be, your presence is one of love and peace and joy. Let us be able to celebrate the joy of the world, knowing that you have come into our midst. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts.
Heavenly Mother, we come to you this day with grateful hearts for the love that surrounds us, love from our family of faith, our love for you that holds us close in the palm of your hand, and love for your son Jesus, our brother, our savior, our redeemer. We ask that you bless these gifts we offer as tokens of our love, that they may be used to honor you here on earth as we reach up to worship you, as we reach out in evangelism, as we reach beyond ourselves in mission, and as we reach in to grow in Christian discipleship. And we pray that we may hold the joy of this season in our hearts all the year through. Thank you, dear God. We love you. And we ask these things in the name of your Son.
sing along with all heaven and earth. 